Pencil Kings, 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 Pencil Kings. Unless you put that work out there and these ideas that you keep getting no matter what, um, you're going to die regretting not doing it, I think. All right, it's Wednesday, so that means it's time for the Pencil Kings podcast. And today we are talking with Youngman Brown from your creative push, which is a very similar podcast to this podcast. So just right off the bat, if you're looking for more audio to listen to while you're working or in your car or walking around, uh, your creative push is another place where you can get tons and tons of artist interviews. And I'm excited to have Youngman here to talk about some of his favorite stories or interviews that he's done in the past. Um, so it'll, you know, give you a shortcut of some of the episodes that you can take a listen to as some of his best stuff. So Youngman, why don't you just quickly intro your creative push and sort of like what it means to you and, and what you're bringing to, to people with your interviews? Uh, sure, Mitch. And first of all, thanks for having me on the show, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. So yeah, I created this podcast because, well, I have like a full-time job. I'm a poker dealer, work 40 hours a week. So, But I also like to write. Like I have a blog and I have this other project called Words Plus Music where this is like an idea that I got where... I would always be inspired by some of the music that I would listen to and I'd, you know, be able to write a story um, while listening to the music. And I was like, man, it would be really cool if I could actually write the story to the music and present it that way. So it's, it's this weird kind of project that I had an idea to do for like two years, but I couldn't, I, I don't know what it was that was holding me back. I think it was just fear of, of doing something new and putting myself out there like that. And it took me like two years to even start doing it and then like a year to, to actually complete my first um, video. And But then when it was done, I like I was like, wow, this is exactly what I had in my mind and I'm, I'm so happy to have done it. And I wish that I had some kind of like a friend in my real life to <laughs> kind of encourage me to do it or like a podcast that would inspire me um, kind of on a daily basis to like get through those things that hold us back and I couldn't find one so I made one. <laughs> so Your Creative Push is a, a daily podcast. It's going to soon be going down to three days a week um, which I, we'll talk about a little bit I guess but it's a daily podcast that is meant for people like me, people with full-time jobs, full-time lives, um, and I interview writers, artists, um, all different kinds of creative types um, to get them to help to push the audience into doing their work on a daily basis because that's kind of what it's all about. Nice. I like it. and It's actually very similar to why I had started Pencil Kings, and it was just the, the loneliness of kind of walking down this creative path where the people who are immediately around you they can't really relate to this idea that you have in your head whatever it is that you want to to bring forward like in, in even certain things like comic books people can relate to it but they don't know how to actually make it happen so it's really cool I, I thought it would be really cool to to create resources that people could realize it's like hey I'm not alone other people are doing this and kind of steal a little bit of that fire from other people <laughs> yeah. and use it for yourself and just feel like well if that person did it they had it like a way harder time because that's one of the things I found is that you know, there's a lot of challenges that people have to overcome in, the, in getting their creative visions to come to reality. Yeah, it's like uh, it's. I like what you said. It's like tapping into the the, the fire that kind of sparks them and trying to put put a twig into there and see if you can catch on fire yourself. That's the co really cool thing about podcasts in general. Um, I think the Joe Rogan experience was the first one I think I caught on to, and I was just like, huh, here's here's these people that are talking about things that I've independently thought about all my life, just but never really talked about to anybody outside. So I think that's the really cool thing about podcasts. You can kind of have a, like a private relationship just in your earbuds with, with like-minded people. And there's so many different podcasts out there that you can really almost find friends out there, you know? Definitely. All right. Well, why don't you tell us some of the stories or, or do you have an, a particular episode or somebody that you had interviewed um, off the top of your head that you find yourself referring back to when people are looking for a particular piece of advice, when people are reaching out to you or you're emailing with them? Uh, what's, what's one of the big episodes that really sticks out in your mind? Well, there's been, so I, I like to interview, um, you know, high profile guests as well as um, people that nobody's kind of ever heard of before that I find just on Instagram. And I found that 
in general, everybody has the same struggles, this kind of fear of rejection, uh, fear of success, um, and general <laughs> overall laziness. Um, I find that kind of goes through everybody. But um, yeah, there's been a, a, a ton of good ones. And a lot of people talk about different things. But uh, one, one really cool one was a um, uh, guy, Philip Ruddy. He's a uh, psychologist that or a psychotherapist rather that really helps uh, artists and creative types. He lives in LA, so he helps uh, screenwriters and people like that. And he sits them down and he, he helps them to actually talk to like that voice in their head, that their creative blocks, their their writer's block. Um, and actually, he had a really cool exercise that he did. And I actually tried it and it really helped. And it's literally <laughs> writing down a conversation, like a screenplay almost, um, with your creative block and treating it like in a, in a friendly way, but like treating it like an actual person and saying, hey, creative block, what's up? Like, well, why are you here? And then you find that like you can actually have like this kind of open dialogue. And it's like a, I don't know, it's like a mini therapy session to just kind of write it out. And it, it's, it is a creative thing to do as well. But it's super helpful to actually find the find out the reason why you have a creative block. Writer's block isn't like something you catch. It's it's something that's very unique and individual to each person. So the things that hold you back are going to be different than the things that hold me back. And uh, it's a really interesting exercise that I would definitely recommend to everybody. Just grab a piece of paper and say, hi, hi, writer's block. Like, why are you here? And see what happens. I remember I went to a retreat and someone had me do a very similar exercise and it was it was really weird because this guy walked me through exactly what you just talked about and i could feel this uh like a black brick it was like the size of a brick and the weight of a brick but it was black in my chest and this was my block and it had this voice and it had this really like small child's voice and so i had this conversation with it and he sort of led me through some of the questions to ask and by the end of it i, I came up with this thing that i was like afraid to be successful which is so crazy, you know, like you're, you're trying to be successful and you're reading all these blogs and you're reading all these books and you're taking all this action. But at the end of the day, if you're afraid and you have this block, it's like no matter what you do, there's going to be some way that you sabotage yourself. And that through the end of the exercise, I was able to sort of reconcile with this black brick. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I could feel it mm -hmm. and have it like dissolve. And I could feel it dissolve in my body. It was such a weird experience. I almost feel afraid to talk like this with people in my real life because I feel that it sounds like crazy talk. You know? Yeah. And I totally agree. And yeah, it's funny how you say in your real life, I, I totally, that totally happens with me too. But I have found that when I do talk about it like that, everybody kind of does have this, you know, these creative things that they want to do or things that hold them back. Even in the poker room, I've mentioned the podcast and out of nowhere, like this person that I've dealt to for three years that has never like said a word is like, oh yeah, I used to do, like I used to try to do stand-up comedy. And I was just like, what? Really? Like, so it, I don't know, being able to talk about it and put yourself out there a little bit, I think um, you'd be really surprised when people are able to latch onto it. So let me ask you, once you did that exercise for yourself, like did you find that the weeks or months afterwards, something miraculous happened? Uh, it wasn't uh, miraculous because at this point I had, um, <laughs> well, okay, so there's two parts to this. So that he was episode uh, 67 and 68. It was a two-parter. So that was about two months ago. And I'm already, once I started the podcast, I've been just, you know, nose to the grindstone, just going at it. And all, basically all my free time has been doing the podcast. And so I have kind of found my creative push already. Um, but the interesting thing about that was the voice was about my writing. And it was a little bit of fear of success as well, like you had. Um, and then just fear of rejection as well. It, it was, will people understand the things that I'm actually going through, like in my heart, in my soul? And if you put that out there, like, will people laugh at me? You know, that kind of a thing. But uh, when I cut it down, when I cut the podcast down to three episodes a week soon, I will, one of the goals with that is to get back to uh, my words plus music, music videos and my writing, which have been almost completely abandoned, um, but not for the reasons that I used to kind of <laughs> abandon them with, for those fears. So I'm really, since that episode and since I did that exercise, I've been really excited about getting back to the writing, but I have to kind of wait until I get more time with the podcast. Yeah, I think it's kind of cool that you can step away from these creative pursuits for a while and they just 
they percolate, like your brain's still processing and working on them, even if you're not consciously doing anything with them. And then just that moment hits, you're like, all right, this is it. It's, it's happening right now. Like I've put it on the shelf for a while, but I always knew I would come back and today's the day. Yeah. And I think, uh, that's been a theme with a lot of the people that I've interviewed. I asked them about their, one of their greatest resistances or one of the hardest times that they've had. And a lot of the answers is, you know, a time that they took a year off or many years off or even a, a few months off. And it's, it's one of those themes where it's like, you're stuck with it. It's like a disease almost. And it's just going to keep saying like, Mike, you're like, come back, you know, come back to, come back to me. Like it's a part of you, you know? And that's why, um, it's so important to to actually do the work. And one of the reasons that I created the podcast in the first place, it's a part of you. And in, unless you put that work out there and these ideas that you keep getting no matter what, um, you're going to die regretting not doing it, I think. So I want to ask a question that seems to come up in our community a fair bit, or maybe not a, a question, but a situation where somebody is, you know, they have a, a dream or, or something that they want to do, uh, but they're afraid to do it. And I feel like we can always use really good examples of what people have done. And there's obvious, like there's huge examples like J.K. Rowling in Harry Potter, where she was a, a an English teacher and um, just sort of writing on the side and then it turned into Harry Potter. But I feel like that level of success, while it's a great story, is it's almost like it's too big so it's not relatable anymore because there's only one Harry Potter. It, it feels like it's out of touch. Um, but we had another episode where there was a woman and she said, well, I don't really draw, I just doodle. And she called them, she just said, I, I'm a doodler. Mm -hmm. And she would just keep doodling and doodling. And then I follow her on Facebook and all of a sudden she's got her first book out and now she's doing prints and all kinds of stuff. And she's got this huge following. And oh, good for like, her. Well, that, that seems like something that's very attainable and something that we could grasp onto. Do you have any examples or stories that you remember from people that you've talked to that are more in the realm of attainability? I love the, the big, hairy, audacious goals, but I also like things that are more relatable and like the next logical step that people can go to from, oh, I'm afraid, I don't really know what to do, but I know I have this thing that has to get out. I'm going to start working on it. And then what happens? Yeah, I think there's, uh, the, that's the story with a lot of different people like, big and small. And uh, my advice for sure is just to start and to not look at the big picture. Because if you look at the at this, this project, if you want to be the next Harry Potter, I think that's a very audacious goal and something that is really hard to kind of figure out where to start. And that usually holds people back from even starting because it's such a big thing, you know, it's a, such a scary thing. And Again, what we were talking about before with like the fear of success, you know, like how would you, where, where would your life go? What would it be like? So I think it's it's really important to just start um, and work on making a complete project and use like use your daily time every single day to work towards like a little part of that goal. Um, and I think that's the most important thing is to not worry about what happens after this thing is done. It's just about making the thing done and then once it's there, figuring out where to go. Because a lot of times the um, the goal that you have, the, the project that you have in your mind, um, it will end up uh, being completely different than what you thought or at least slightly different. So it's really important to just kind of go with it and see what happens. Do you feel like it was like that for you with creative your creative push that you weren't sure where it was going to go? You just started and and now it's morphed into something that wasn't in included in the original vision? 100%. Um, when I started, I, it was more of like a proof of concept thing to be like, Again, it's a really scary thing to kind of put yourself out there. Like I, my episode zero, I just hit record and just was like, all right, like this is why I'm doing it. And basically the story I already told you about, you know, why um, it was important for me to have a creative push. So it was more of a proof of concept thing and it really exploded and people latched on. Like everybody does have these, you know, these blocks that they need to kind of work through every single day and to get people on the show that are really supportive of that and want to help people um, has been awesome. So now as I'm approaching 100, 100 episodes, I'm starting to kind of reevaluate. Now I'm like, okay, this is my, this has become my absolute passion, like to do this, to help people. And <laughs> the funny thing is I hate my job now, which I, before I was, okay, I was okay with it. And when I, when I started the podcast, I was like, all right, this isn't a podcast about quitting your job. This is a podcast about just doing the work, which is still completely relevant. But 
um, since I started it, I have just come to hate my job and I just feel like a part of me is dying when I'm there. So yeah, um, it's completely changed. Now I want to find a way to monetize the podcast, whether it's uh, inserting, I don't know, some advertisements or, or just figuring that out so that I can be able to quit my job and, and work on this full time. Cause I have now found my passion. That's awesome. I love when I meet people who, like you said, they have found your passion. I feel like for me, I had had the passion for a long time to make video games and then I lost it. And I've still been, you know, lately been grasping at straws, figuring out what is the right thing. I love helping artists, uh, I like doing this podcast, but I haven't found that thing like it was before, where it's like nothing else really matters. And uh, I'm, I love it when I see people who are fired up and be like, no, this is the dream. Like, this is what I'm passionate about. And um, I had a family member who was a, I had like a distant family member and I met him once and he drove a, a truck where they take um, pianos and like large things and he had this crane. So if you were on like the fourth floor of an apartment building, you had a, a grand piano, like one of the big ones, he would be the guy that or his company is the people that you would call to lift that up and get it into your apartment through the balcony window. But he was so passionate about driving this truck that I was just mesmerized. I would just sit there and listen to him talk, and I absolutely <laughs> loved it. So, man, any do you feel like the, the passion comes from just doing it that eventually, like, it starts to take over, like, it becomes bigger than you, and then you're just, like, it's just flowing through you? Or how does that work? Because, you know, for me, somebody, I feel like I'm floundering a little bit. I don't know the right thing to grasp onto. Have you found any insights that other people through the stories that you've listened to where they, they, I, I don't know. I just, don't, I don't know what the, the process is. And I feel like it's really important because once you have it, so many things come into focus. Like you might not know how to turn it into a viable career, but just the fact that you're doing something that you're passionate, like that's amazing. And I feel like there's not enough of this in the world at all. Yeah, absolutely. I think, it, yes, it's, uh, and we talk about this on the show a lot too. It's a flow state. Um, I get into a flow state whenever I'm interviewing people. Like I just feel like I don't know how to explain it, <laughs> and it's it's one of the things that I always ask my guests to try to explain whenever they mention it because it's this weird thing where it feels like it's out of body experience almost. But as I'm interviewing some of these people, I'm just like all of a sudden the interview's over. I'm like, wow, who conducted that interview? And it was just such a joy to do. Um, I think that's the the thing that I always strive to find and, and do. I'm, I'm feeling a little bit right now with you. Like, and that's why I think that you have found your passion too. Like you're a pro at this, man. Like I love your podcast and you're doing great things. Uh, I think you'll eventually find what you're going to do um, or what you'll be the most passionate about. And I think my advice for that is to just in general to, for people to not get stuck in like the story that you write for yourself. If that makes sense, don't just because you went to college and got a degree and whatever it is, if you have come to not enjoy it anymore, feel free to audible, feel free to switch it up and do something different that you are passionate about. And it might not last forever, but you absolutely should ride that wave as long as you can, no matter what it is. Even if it's driving a truck and lifting cranes up into, you know, if it, <laughs> it, it, it lifting a pianos up into the fourth floor of, of, a, of a, like I've only seen that happen on cartoons. And usually there's like a, a cartoon cat or, or something underneath that gets crushed by the piano whenever, <laughs> he, you know, your family member doesn't do his job right. But, you know, if you're passionate about doing that, stick with it. You know, that's a, such a rare thing to find in life. And you should definitely latch on to whatever it is, whether it's creative or not. Okay, well, let me ask you this then. So you have a full-time job and you have a basically a full-time podcast because for those of you listening, like the, Pencil Kings is a once a week podcast. It takes a lot of work to record it, edit it, um, get the pages set up and all this stuff. You're doing it five times a week mm -hmm. and you started it five times a week. So how do you balance all that? Um, and would you recommend that people start off like that with jumping into the deep end? Because I've seen it inside our community where there's people who sort of dip their toe in the water and be like, I'm going to learn to draw. And they approach it in this slow, sort of like too careful way that they're, it's almost like they're afraid to make mistakes or break something. Mm. And then there's other people who have tons of commitments and they're like, no, I just jumped in. I was doing like three or four hours a night, loving it. And I look at how far I've come in two months. Um, for you, how did you 
how did you balance that? And did you rationalize the decision in the beginning to like jump all in or dip your toe in the water or was it more of a natural process? Yeah, it was, I was, I made the conscious decision to, to jump in full on. Um, and my wife and I discussed it beforehand. I knew it was going to be a lot of work and I knew (laughs) it was going to be somewhat of an insane thing. Like most of the people that (laughs) I interviewed were like, you're crazy. Especially the ones that have done podcasts. They're like, you're insane. Like, I can't believe that you're, you're doing five days a week. Um, but for me, it was important to do what I wanted to do to make a podcast that a carbon copy of me would want to listen to. And for me, that was a daily one because it's tough, you know, it's, it's tough to do it every single day. But I think that's a really important part of creativity is to, even if you're dipping your toes, like make sure you dip your toes every single day and try to make it a daily practice. Even if it's only like 10 minutes a day, usually those 10 minutes will turn into a little bit longer, but it's, it's kind of making it a daily part of your life so that you don't really need a podcast like mine, um, to motivate you. And it's kind of like, I don't know that, that, that was the reason that I did it. And also for, um, like you said, just to see what happens, you know, to, to go in, to kind of go all in. And then if it fails, if nobody listens, then fine. Like I tried my hardest, but then I wouldn't have, um, the excuse of saying, oh, well, you know, I only did it once a week or I only did it once a month or whatever it may be, um, to just push myself and do it as hard as I possibly could to see if it latched on. And then if it didn't, I wouldn't, you know, have any really excuses of why it didn't. That makes sense. And it's, a uh... Something that I've I've thought a lot about this and the difference between those that will just say make it and those that don't. It's like there's this switch and it's like you're either on and you're going to do it or you're unsure or it's not on. And you'll know if it's on. Like you made a conscious decision. It's like, look, I'm going all in on this. I I had a conversation with my wife. I cleared my schedule uh, as much as I could. And, and I said, you probably said no to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I remember saying no to a lot of birthday parties or showing up late to the party because I had to get my stuff done. It was more, uh, more important than the social commitments. Do you find that too with you? I I just, I feel like I want to verify a lot of this stuff because I, sometimes it feels like I'm in a vacuum. I talk to people and it's like, am I, is this really the way it is? Or (laughs) Is this unique yeah. only to me? But it seems like this idea of the switch or the decision, those are the two words that keep coming up in my mind. It's just whoever makes the decision and it applies to everything in life. And I love this that a lot of the, the we'll just call them like secrets or the things that we uncover in talking to other creative people, it, it applies to all areas of your life. Like if you're a bad cook and you just make a decision one day, you're like, I'm not, I'm not a bad cook anymore. Like I'm going to go and start making this real or you're out of shape and you're just making the decision. I'm not going to be out of shape anymore. Or same with your art or whatever it is. You just, you make that decision. Yeah. I can completely verify that for you. Uh, and, <laughs> and that's like one of the really powerful ideas that I've learned uh, in these first five or six months of, of doing the podcast. Um, and it's such a simple kind of discovery. It's, it's like you said, it's a switch. Like it's a binary thing. You're either an artist or you're not. You're either a photographer or you're not. You're either a writer or you're not. It's it, all it is is a decision. That's it. You just have to say yes. I'm a writer, and like I said, do it every single day. And then if you're, it's just spending a little bit of time every single day doing it. You can call yourself a writer. You might not be J.K. Rowling. You might not be, you know, the greatest uh, painter in the world, but you are. You can define yourself as that now. You might not be the best, but you are an artist, you are whatever X, whatever it is, it doesn't even have to be creative. I think that's one of the really um, powerful ideas of doing it. And another powerful idea is when people ask you what you do, you know, for a living, it's okay to say, I'm an artist, first and foremost, you don't have to say, I'm a poker dealer that podcasts in my spare time. No, you can say I'm a podcaster, and I do this. And you can say it confidently. And you can say, but I make money doing whatever it is that might not be your passion. If, if your job happens to be your passion, that's great. And you can define yourself however you want. But it's okay to define yourself by your creative passions. Absolutely. All right. I think we have time for one more uh, question. So I, I love asking about weird things that come up um, in people's lives because a lot of the, the, the things that we've talked about is... is I feel like relatively common advice. Maybe it's a little bit uncommon, but there's, I love the weird and wonderful about the world. Uh, do you have any weird stories or uh, things that really surprised you or podcasts that just went to like a weird 
place you're like man that that one was special there's something different about that one um that you can share with us yeah the first thing that comes to mind is my interview with nathan carson which was episode 54 um and i remember that number because of this story um so one of my anytime a a listener um will email me and give me suggestions on somebody that i'm that I should interview. I don't even ask a question. I just, I reach out to that person and try to get them on the show because it's so wonderful when, you know, I get that interaction from, from somebody. So, um, he, somebody suggested Nathan Carson, who is this, um, artist that uses Periscope, um, and he Periscopes like his whole life. It's, it's pretty interesting, but, uh, yeah. So I messaged him on Instagram and he's like, yeah, yeah, let's jump on a Skype call. And so we jumped on a Skype call and all of a sudden the interview kind of just started. It, it, I didn't get to do my like, you know, pre-interview chat. Uh, honestly, it like flustered me a little bit, but we, we, we just kind of went for it and we were right into the interview. And uh, so there wasn't much. He didn't really know too much about the podcast. He just knew it was about creativity, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so uh, three quarters of the way through the interview, <laughs> he was on this rant about how, you know, you should – not have an end goal in mind, kind of like we were already discussing, you know, you shouldn't, the example he uses, like, if you're going to create a podcast, you shouldn't, you know, say, I'm going to create 54 episodes and then quit or whatever. And I'm just like, dude, you're episode 54. It was the most <laughs> uh, psychedelic kind of experience that that I've had. And, <laughs> and uh, it actually, we, we were talking about synchronicity after that, because I think synchronicities are really cool uh, when they happen, you know, these uh, totally random seemingly random things that are just connected, you know, where it's just like, this is totally impossible. This can't be a coincidence. And then that actually led to the story I told you earlier about uh, Philip Ruddy coming on the show because he heard that episode about synchronicity and he was like, hey, I should be on the show. So it's, it's just really interesting when things like that happen and lead to, you know, all different other kinds of things down the line. So that was one of my favorite stories. And I'm actually going to have uh, Nathan back on for episode 100 as my 100th episode. So I'm really looking forward to that. Nice. All right. Well, I usually like to try and package one actionable piece of information um, that people can take away. I know we've had a lot of takeaways here already, but one of the things that just popped in my head is this realization of reaching out to other people and asking them about their craft. So before we hopped on the call here, I was uh, peppering Youngman with questions about his podcast. How, how does it work? How, you know, how does he do certain things? And I'm trying to learn from other people. And what I found is that people are so generous with the information that they'll share with you, help you out along the way, give you tidbits of advice, just like I, you know, I'm happy to pass on information um, that I've gained to other people. And so for you listening, you know, whatever that thing is that you want to do, See if there's somebody that you can reach out to and just ask them, ask them a que- you know, an intelligent question about what they're doing and how it relates to you so you can learn and you can start this practice of reaching out to other people. I did a really poor job of it with the podcast uh, with not reaching out to people sooner, but you know, there's always time to change and you know, today's the day. So that's it for me, my, my little rant at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, anything, any last words before we close out here? young? Yeah. Man? Just, just latching onto that. Like you do do a good job of that. Cause that's how we connected. You said, Hey, I just interviewed this, this really cool, uh, artist, you know, Chinsia and you should have her on your show. And then I did have her on my show and now I'm on your show. So it's like, it, you never know kind of where that will lead. And it's not that scary to shoot somebody an email. And, uh, yeah, if anybody wants to ask me a question about, um, what I do, or if you want a suggestion for a guest that I've had that will relate to what you do, uh, just hit, hit me up, youngman at yourcreativepush.com. I will respond to all emails. So hit me up. Sweet. And is yourcreativepush.com the best place to send people to, to get more? Or would you rather them go to iTunes? Or how, yeah, how, just, what's the best way? Yeah, just go to the website and then you can, if you want to subscribe, you can pick whatever player you want. But yeah, yourcreativepush.com has all the episodes there. It's the best way to find it. Awesome. And we will have show notes as usual at pencilkings.com slash podcast uh, where we've got all the episodes. And uh, if you are listening to this later, you just have to scroll down a little bit and you'll find Youngman's interview. So thanks for listening and uh, we'll be back next week. Thanks, Youngman. Thank you. Good demand patience, skill, years of practice. Ah, you talk like a fool. I would trade a century of practice for an ounce of inspiration.